I've always been interested in how, in the, how one behaves in a compassionate manner to others. I grew up with the homeless and the alcoholics and the, um, all the derelicts, really. And uh, I was sort of split between um, a decent family and the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, and, like the dregs. They've, they've become non-persons. They just wait to die. And you see them in the street dying every day. And there was a conflict in me, and probably still is, as to how one feels compassion towards a person like that, but is also repelled by it. And that's one of the reasons I did the picture. For me, the, the, the story was so good. And the predicament of um, the dilemma that uh, Frank Pierce, Nick Cage's character, is, is in. Uh, was something that I thought was really worth exploring. Joe Connolly, who wrote the novel, Bringing Out the Dead, was uh, uh, very much, in my opinion, like Frank. It's um, all based on real stories, and, uh, and the crisis, the spiritual crisis, is real. I mean, there were a number of reasons why I wrote the book, and, and I guess the main one was to sort of save the lives of the people I couldn't by writing them down. To write something so moving and so truthful and so compassionate you have you have had you, you've had to have lived through it i went to the uh, ems academy out in fort totten queens so you're out there for about five weeks and then they give you the keys to an ambulance in east harlem and you're sent off frank pierce is, is a man who w wants to save people the definition of saving lives keeps changing, you know, and you have to keep adapting your sense of compassion and what got you into the job, or else you're, you're pretty doomed. You know, you lose a lot more than you, than you uh, save. And, and again, that's what, probably more than anything else, what got me to, to write this thing. I was good at my job. There were periods where my hands moved with a speed and skill beyond me. But in the last year, I'd started to lose that control. I hadn't saved anyone in months. I just needed a few slow nights, followed by a couple of days off. Line of four. We're there. What interested me right from the start was what it looked like to, to have somebody like Frank, who has absolutely no walls between him and the suffering, who feels everything. Sorry. He began life as a paramedic with a feeling of a superpower, that he can heal, that he can save. But all of us know that bad things happen to good people all the time, and we can't save everybody. And I think he's having a real conflict with that. After a while, I grew to understand that my role was less about saving lives than about bearing witness. I was a grief mob. It was enough that I simply showed up. The thing about Frank is that he's completely lost all support. He's got no support system, you know? He's got no wife anymore to go back to. He's, he's, his partners are all nuts. He's at, he's at the breaking point. And he's looking for that way out. You swore that you'd fire me if I came in late again. You swore, you swore. I'll fire you tomorrow! His face and his eyes are extraordinary, and I see that he's also a bold actor. He isn't afraid to go out and go over the top in a sense, uh, still within a truthful way, and keep it truthful, uh, keep it real. What are you doing? I'm driving out of myself. Are you afraid to shot? I'm taking that into consideration. Are you okay? I've never felt better in my life. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. I did some very intense research on this movie, probably more intense than I have done in a while. I did ride along with paramedics. And that wasn't something I was prepared for. When we first drove up to a drive-by shooting, and they said, okay, in a calm and orderly fashion, put your bulletproof vest on, and you step out of that car, you don't know what you're walking into. I used to joke and say it's the world's most intense jukebox, and you don't know what song they're going to play. EMS, move it. Where are you hit? <laughs> you see this shit? <laughs> Niggas put a hole in me. <laughs> Take a deep breath. I was 
Working with a tremendous cast, I was re-teaming again with people like uh, Ving Rhames and John Goodman. Uh, I've uh, I've now made three movies with Ving, and and uh, I'm always impressed by his uh, his his commitment to to acting. He's a very serious actor. I do my homework, I do my research, and then, quite honestly, I don't know what's going to happen on any given moment. I may deliver a line one way, and Nicolas Cage may come at me in a different way, which may cause me to do something that I don't know I'm going to do. I haven't seen the ghosts. You mean the people we love? Yeah. Hey, gotta go, gotta go. God bless them. You get used to that, son. You ever notice people who see shit are always crazy? I think the worst is over. Oh, no, son. It can always get worse. John Goodman is one of these actors that, when I worked with him on Raising Arizona, I was aware that he, um, he had the, the, the gift of being effortless. And um, I never see him acting. I see him having fun. I see him relaxing and still being fascinating to watch. It's wonderful to work with somebody who has, not just loves, but has a passion for his work as he does. It's, uh, he's one of two people that I've, I've worked with like that, that just have the supreme joy um, of working. Boy, some partner you are, Frank. I could have walked there faster. I'm starving and you stopped to talk to hookers. You're making me nuts. Is that what you're trying to do? Drag me down a nuts bill with you? Working with Patricia on Bringing Out the Dead was, was a, an opportunity for me to, to observe her in, in, in the work ethic and the work environment. I keep thinking about how tough my father was. Oh, now I know he had to be like that to make us tough. Because this city, it'll kill you if you aren't strong enough. Well, the city doesn't discriminate. It gets everybody. I always knew she was a great actress, but I was thrilled and proud of her to see her on the set and to know that, you know, she's one of the generous ones. It's so great to work with Nichols. I've always been so inspired by his work and uh, he's so moving in this movie, and he's so full of life in this movie. How long have you been doing this? Five years. <sighs> wow, you must have seen some things, huh? Well, no, I mean, you, you sort of learn to block it out, you know? It's like, um, like cops fencing off a crime scene. But then, something good will happen. It's, everything just glows. What originally attracted me to bringing out the dead was the opportunity to work with Martin Scorsese. Uh, Martin Scorsese was a huge influence on me growing up, wanting to become an actor. I was looking in a way for a picture um, that uh, I would be able to work with him on. Um, I remember it, a few years ago, his uncle, Francis Coppola, asked me to meet him, so I did, we had a nice talk. And um, a couple of Christmases ago, Brian De Palma told me uh, at a Christmas dinner, he said, uh, he's really great to work with. He did Snake Eyes with him, and you should work with him. So when I heard he was doing this, I immediately said yes. This is the worst suicide attempt I've ever seen. Can you feel that pulse here? That's where you cut. And it's not a cross, it's down, like so. Here, take it. I can't. What? I can't. Oh, I see. With all the poor people of this city who wanted only to live and were viciously murdered, you have the nerve to sit here wanting to die and not go through with it? You make me sick! Take it! Take it! I think what's very fascinating about uh, what Connolly wrote in the book um, and what Schrader got in the script and Nick in the uh, performance is the conflict within themselves of um, almost feeling that they are God when they bring some people back to life. Um, they've got to get past that, that uh, enormous ego and the enormous pride to get to the real heart of what they're doing, which is um, compassion. You bring somebody back to life, it's the greatest thing in the world. You know, you really help somebody, you really get in there and save them before they go down. It's, it's the best drug there is. Saving someone's life is like falling in love. The best drug in the world.
for days, sometimes weeks afterwards. You walk the street, making infinite whatever you see. Once, for a few weeks, I couldn't feel the earth. Everything I touched became lighter. Horns played in my shoes. Flowers fell from my pockets. You wonder if you'd become immortal, as if you've saved your own life as well. God has passed through you. Why deny it? That for a moment there, why deny for a moment there, God was you.